Hi folks, this is August 12, Wednesday, and this is the Daily Word in the Crisis. Well, this is one of those that could be controversial, I hope not. I don't believe I'm being political in what I'm about to say, but sometimes issues of morality, justice, and right and wrong cross over into the political realm. Loyalty to any political party can blind us to essential issues of morality and right and wrong. So I truly pray that no one takes offense. I just want to strongly encourage Christians, and by extension all Americans, to think rather than feel. Think. Examine facts. Think things through instead of simply reacting emotionally to ads and claims and personalities and inflammatory statements by politicians no matter who they are or what party they hail from. Draw your own conclusions rather than be swayed by the so-called news agencies who really just want to tell you what to think. The Lord spoke to this issue of reason in relation to social justice in Isaiah 1, 17 and 18. He said, Learn to do good, seek justice, reprove the ruthless, defend the orphan, plead for the widow. Come now. This is the the key verse. Come now and let us reason together. Well, the Lord was talking about seeing and recognizing sin for what it is. He was calling us to reason it through. Examine facts and come to righteous conclusions. He spoke to situations in which the most vulnerable among the people were made to suffer at the hands of ruthless people who really didn't care about anybody but themselves. He called us to stand for what is right. Think. Sin almost always stems from twisted emotional thinking rather than solid reasoning. It comes from believing lies and false narratives. Sin comes from distortions of truth made to appear as something other than what is real. God calls us to examine evidence and draw rational conclusions in order to to set right what is wrong in order to confront those who harm others and to defend those who need defending. So I'm asking my fellow Americans to think, to examine facts and realities, and then act. If you're a citizen of another nation, and if you have the power of the ballot box, the same principle applies. Stop listening to propaganda produced by any political party or any biased news agency, and they're all biased. Don't let them tell you how to interpret events. You can do that for yourself. Examine the facts. What is actually happening? And who is actually responsible? Who is affected? And how are they affected? So I have a set of questions to pose. First, where are riots allowed to go unchecked? Where are businesses being destroyed? Where are people dying from the violence? Second, what cities are seeing dramatic double-digit surges in violent crime and murder? Third, what cities are defunding and reducing police forces in the face of this when those forces should be equipped and deployed to protect citizens from the harm being done? Yes, there have been some bad cops, But the vast majority are good people who signed on for a dangerous job to serve and protect the community. Fourth, what political party governs those cities where this is happening? Yes, that matters because political parties operate according to a philosophy that determines how they govern. Fifth, Which party's platform best represents your values as a Christian? Get past the personalities. Look at the platform factually. Lastly, now draw your conclusion based on the answers to the questions and then exercise your power to vote accordingly. Having said all that, it's become popular to label anybody who questions any of this, particularly questioning the narrative of the left, as a racist, as a racist, as a bigot, or something worse. So in case anybody wants to accuse me of being racist in my questions and statements, please do your homework. I have two factual answers for you. 
First, the people and communities that are most impacted by the, this violence and this death and this destruction going on are black and Hispanic. It's their lives being taken. It's their children taking bullets. It's their jobs and businesses that are being destroyed, not by the police, but by lawless rioters and violent thugs who can no longer even pretend to be protesting on their behalf. People I love and value are being hurt by all this. Second, for the record, as a pastor, I have long campaigned against racism, and I have long practiced racial equality in my ministry. My staff is racially mixed. My church board is racially mixed. My worship team is racially mixed. My congregation is racially mixed. We overcame racial prejudice or racial conflict long ago. We worked hard to do it, and we embraced the conviction of the Lord to get there. We are a family to one another, and we have one another's backs. Three weeks ago, I was honored and deeply blessed to perform the wedding ceremony for our youth pastor, who is white, to a longtime member of our church who serves on our worship team, at whom I have considered to be a spiritual daughter for many, many years. She happens to be wonderfully and beautifully black. Her family has been family to me and in my heart for almost 20 years. I protect and defend them with my life, and I know they do the same for me. I myself am racially mixed as a descendant of Europeans and as a member of the Osage Nation, Native American. Don't be deceived at the white face I bear from my wonderful mother's side of the family. My heart is native, but I honor and cherish both sides of my bloodline. I am no more a racist because my face is white than I am a savage because I'm an Osage Indian. So please be careful how you read me. I won't tolerate shades of hatred, and I can easily unfriend and block or ban violators. Hatred or prejudice in any form has no place in the church or in any Christian's life. Hatred and anger can never establish justice. Jesus himself was very Jewish racially. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Jesus himself was very Jewish racially. But he crossed every racial line that existed in his day. Samaritans hated Jews, and Jews hated Samaritans. Many Jews would go the long way around Samaria to avoid being contaminated by what they considered to be a mixed and polluted race. But Jesus didn't hesitate to pass through Samaria, and he lovingly revealed himself to a Samaritan woman at a well in Samaritan territory, crossing every cultural line and taboo to talk with her and minister to her. Men did not talk to women in, present, in, in, in public if they weren't married. In another case, he healed a Canaanite woman, a Gentile, when many Jews would cross the street to avoid being defiled by one. Those are just two incidences. The Apostle Paul wrote in Galatians 3, starting at verse 26, For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized into Christ, all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free man. There is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's descendants, heirs according to promise. In other words, we're all family. We are family. Let's be certain we act like it. Let's be certain we love like it, and when necessary, vote like it. Think, think, think. Don't react. Reason, and don't allow yourself to be stirred by mere emotion. Feelings are useful, but they're seldom the measure of truth. Feelings shift and change. Facts do not. And so stand by the law of God, the eternal word. In... <laughs> And in the world, examine actual facts in light of that word. It's the fact that never changes. Well, that's the end of the rant for the day. Have a good one, and God bless you.